what people always think, but I always believe that the few are the fine sometimes, yeah? So thank you for joining us. Let's hear a big hand for the audience who's seated around here. Thank you. Probably just wanting to check whether we're all awake. I know it's not an art to do that. As a shine on the jewelry industry grows, it's important to be able to manage our operations on a daily basis and of course to meet demands and for increasing profitability. I'm sure we all agree with that, right? Okay then, here we are to listen to SAP's perspective on this and with that I'd like to hand over to our speaker. Let's hear it for the Senior Customer Advisor, South Indian Market, Mr. Rajesh Naik. much uh, okay i'm i'm uh, audible so hello everyone okay so uh, hello everyone uh, my name is rajesh i am a senior customer advisor for uh, sap and i generally deal with a lot of uh, mid market segments that is msmes in uh, india and what i can see is that uh, in general uh, like you know quite a lot of uh, customers right uh, in current uh, what you call it, in a current environment especially jewelry customers Generally, you have this end-to-end -end value chain coverage, right? Uh, um, like before I get, get into the value chain, what I want to probably talk about is where is India, right? India is growing. The shine on the jewelry market is like, you know, it's getting shinier and shinier. But uh, uh, what's happening is with the growing demand, there are a lot of challenges which come as well. Uh, like, you know, there was, I'll just start with a small anecdote from Einstein, Mr. Einstein, uh, so, uh, Dr. Albert Einstein. So what happened was Dr. Al Albert Einstein was in Oxford right? Uh, he was basically giving an exam, I mean, basically conducting an exam for a lot of students. And what the students found out was, it was the same question paper as the last year, right? And then uh, they went and asked Einstein saying, uh, so why are the questions same? Then what's the point of this exam? So Einstein told that uh, although the questions are the same, the answers are not the same. The answers were different last year and the answers are different this year. The same is with businesses, right? Uh, while uh, the questions remain the same, how do I increase my profitability? How do I increase, how do I make sure that my procurement costs are low? How do I make sure that my production costs are low? How do I make sure that I give the best customer experience? How do I change my brand? I mean, there was an entire discussion on how to change into a luxury brand, right? The questions remain the same, but the answers change. And that's where we are here to help you answer those questions better. We've been in the industry for the last 50 years and uh, we've been in India for the last 25 years, right? And uh, what we, we have around like, you know, one lakh plus customer base. And what we try to bring to the current Indian environment is our learnings from our 50 years of engagement around the world, as well as our learnings for the last 25 years in India, right? So what we have generally seen is that this is the end-to-end -end value chain for the jewelry retail, uh, a little bit of trading as well, uh, wherein uh, we generally have our, sorry, which way is the laser pointer here? It's not working, it's all right, no worries. So what you've seen is, uh, these are generally the main problems where like, you know, when you look at your uh, subcontractor network, What's the stock lying with my subcontractor network, right? What are the stock li li lying with my subcontractors? How do I track that? Or rather something like with respect to procurement of bullion. So you either procure your bullion from your banks, from vendors, as well as you even uh, procure subcontracting services from a lot of subcontractors, right? So how do I do that? And what are the problems there? So generally in supply chain, what we've seen is there is an inefficient and costly supply chain process, right? Uh, we, there, are, there are a lot of uh, different siloed departments who work together and they probably maintain some Excel sheet of to just make sure that to track as to what are the, uh, like, you know, what are the stocks lying with each of the subcontractors and what is the valuation of that particular stock. Uh, and then when we get into the entire omni-channel service, like, you know, uh, retail is going through an, uh, an entire omni-channel, uh, what do you call it, uh, restructuring, right, of their business. And jewelry is no different. Uh, definitely you are, as a brand, you would definitely be looking at providing omni-channel services where you look at probably like, you know, something that Tanishk has done. And again, on SAP's platform where you are able to provide virtual try-on on your websites, right? Something of that sort. So definitely omni-channel services are there, but then you should have a system which is able to cater to those omni-channel needs. And definitely 
from the stores and franchise uh, perspective, there's always this uh, old school way of handling customers, right, for a lot of retail stores. Obviously, we have different types of customers. We have the older customers who like the old school way, but again, when you're trying to transform your brand to the newer generation, you would like to have a better customer experience even for those newer generations, right? So how do we do that, right? So that's when what we thought was these are some of the enablers that we basically bring, right? I'll not bore you with a lot of details here. There are a lot of boxes here, like you know, all the way from your product innovation, how do you make sure that your budgets are being tracked for all your innovation, to manufacturing, how you ma manage the manufacturing, your carriers, right, of your uh, uh, industry. How do you manage them? Then supply chain, how do I make sure that all my stock is being accounted for, right? And then definitely marketing view, definitely one of the most important parts of the jewelry industry where we are able to market it right to the right customer and we are able to give the gr a great customer experience whenever they come to the retail store, right? And definitely from a sales perspective, we are looking at something which enables omnichannel, where you're able to have your own websites, you're able to have your own web shop, and then you're able to integrate that experience with your brick and mortar store, store experience as well. And then definitely at a very high level, I mean, most of the industry customers, they definitely are looking at sourcing and procurement, although procurement for jewelry industry is a little different than the normal procurement because you are looking, doing a lot of precious metal commodity procurement as well. So there are a lot of nuances that come with that. And definitely from a finance, you would like to have a great, uh, what do you call it, single source of truth finance so that you are compliant to the law of the land, right? You are able to have your system in such a way that you are able to be compliant to not just India, but also when you're looking at uh, taking your brand global, right? You are able to be compliant to the law of the land of the other countries in the world as well, right? So definitely all of that basically encompasses in what we provide as a service to the jewelry industry. So uh, can we go to the next slide? It's not working. All right. All right, no worries. So SAP has gone through an evolution in the last 50 years, right? So we started all the way in the 1970s, where it was uh, uh, like an old school model, a server, or what you call a server client model, where uh, people used to either sit on servers and used to have a black and white screen and they used to put in data. And then we've come a long way, all the way to 2023, where now, uh, okay, uh, how many out here have used chat GPT? Good amount. Gen AI is the flavor of the year, right? And if in case, I don't speak about Gen AI, then I will not have my job, right? That's, that's the thing in the entire IT industry as well as all under other industries as well. So definitely we have, SAP as a company has been embedding machine learning and AI into its solutions for a while now, but Gen AI is something we are really excited about and I believe that it is going to be very, very, uh, what do you call it, important for the jewelry industry as well. And then how do I basically All right, so how do I basically, how do we basically look at these business processes is that we definitely are looking at something like a cloud ERP, which is going to be your single source of truth for all your business processes, right? So anything that happens from your supply chain, from your finance, from your marketing, sales, everything basically comes and sits in your cloud ERP. And then let's say whichever line of business or whichever department is very important for you. For example, sales is really important, especially for the jewelry industry. In that case, you need to have those right solutions to make sure that you are getting the highest value out of the system. So that is also is something that we provide, for example, customer relationship management. Supply chain is a big problem for you. Then we definitely have special solutions, which again, sit on top of our cloud ERP. And by the way, the, all the processes that we are talking about, are all AI-powered AI business process. So there's always a layer of AI, artificial intelligence, on top of these processes. Now, but when I look at it, like, you know, when we look at these uh, uh, processes, there's always that thing that, yaar, agar mera end user jo hai, like the end user who is sitting on a laptop and who is basically working, if they do not put their data into the system, then what's the use, right? Until unless we do not put the data, there's no use, like, you know, what data am I going to analyze, right? 
So for that, what we need to do is we need to simplify the user experience. That is, a user should not have to log into a laptop to enter the transaction for the day, right? You should be able to use the latest mobile devices, the latest QR scans, the all the QR scans or the OCRs, whatever it might be. You should be able to use it and you should be able to use it well on any device that you own. So SAP, what does SAP do? SAP provides a user interface which is very simple to use, right? Very simple to use. It's very intuitive, very easy to search things. It's almost like a Google search tool, right? You would be able to search anything and everything on any device as well. So that way users are not uh, confined to their laptops to enter the transactions into the system, but they are able to do it on any device. Now over and above what happens is, Let's say we have, the, like again, I already talked about AI, 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 right? All our processes have a layer of AI. Then you will ask me, then what about user interface? Can it have a layer of AI? And yes, it can have a layer of AI. How does it have a layer of AI? It's basically from, uh, I'll just have a small demonstration for that. Right, so this is one of our use cases where we basically, again, the legal disclaimer, it does not go out of this room. No problem if, even if it goes out of the room. So now here we have a, a user. So this is Joule, basically, our AI assistant. So now this is a new user, okay? Now instead of going and finding out the transactions which shows purchase order, they can just go here and type as to what they want to do in the system. Once you go and uh, basically type it, the system responds from like, you know, using natural language processing. It responds and basically that, what does that do? It basically brings down your user training costs because you are able to now communicate and talk to the system. And over and above that, what it also does is it basically even connects with the internet, right? So what you can do, like the sky is the limit because you can basically take your internal data. You have external data which is available on the internet. You can bring it both together and you can do a business case analysis even in the system. Right? That's the power of Gen AI that we have. So now that we know from a perspective of uh, uh, the user as to, okay, fine, uh, the user is able to uh, like, you know, put all the, what do you call it, all the data into the system easily. Now what does the diff do our different, uh, what do you call, personas that we have in our, uh, in our uh, organization, what do they want from the system, right? For example, what does the CEO want? CEO wants one single business view for himself, right? Himself or herself. They want one single business view for himself or herself and they want to make sure that they are able to get it all in one place, right? And not depend on anyone. And definitely they would like to also have their planning done in the system itself and it is basically adhered to, right? Whatever the sales plan is, their operation plan is, their financial plan is, everything needs to be May, everything we need to make sure that they are able to follow that through the system, right? And definitely from a procurement head perspective, uh, definitely bullion procurement, stone buying, uh, like you know what is the type of, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, what are the types of various gems and I think you, uh, like you know there are a lot of holdings or like you know those rings, whatever you like, you know whatever uh, parts of the jewelry that you would basically buy and definitely packaging material, is one of the major things like, you know, how do I make sure that I have the right uh, amount of packaging material available for all my customers? And definitely subcontracting process, which is an important part of gold, of the jewelry industry, where you are able to give your uh, manufacturing to a subcontractor and you are able to basically track the work as well as your inventory in that subcontractor's place, right? And then from a supply chain perspective, definitely from a jewelry inventory, how do I track it? How do I tag my jewelry? How do I, uh, like, you know, not just the jewelry, I think uh, uh, the casting. Casting was one of the most, uh, what do you call it, complicated process of jewelry industry. So how do I do my mold tracking as well? How do I do my wax tree tracking, right? All of that is needed. And then definitely quality inspection. Quality inspection, how, how much amount of rework is done, how much amount of repair is needed for whatever work I've done is all covered as a part of uh, as a part of the, uh, what do you call it, the responsibilities of a supply chain head. And then from a CFO's perspective, again, right? It's all about finance at the end. So what does, that, what does our Rokada master do? What does our CFO need? 
the CFO would like to need whatever product I'm selling, what is the cost of it, right? What is the cost for myself? And definitely from a, that then, like, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, comes into our profitability analysis, right? How much profit am I getting? How much margin am I getting? And then definitely from a uh, perspective of compliance as well as from a perspective of bookkeeping, how is my financial management happening, right? So that is definitely some of the priorities for our CFO. And then definitely one of the most important or the leader of the entire organization is our customer. Now, customer, what do they want? They want an omni-channel presence. They want a personalized experience for themselves in the retail, uh, in the, your retail store, right? They do not want to just have an old school. I like, you know, old school is for probably for the parents who really like that, but for the new generation, they like their own personalized user experience when they go to a jewelry industry. So definitely with that, uh, what we basically are looking at is, uh, all right, am I doing it wrong? Or is it? <laughs> All right, no worries, no worries. Thank you. So definitely from a perspective of uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, what a CEO wants, uh, and uh, like, you know, definitely a real-time business view, and uh, okay, uh, <laughs> and a planning view for the uh, CEO as well. Uh, what do we give, right? We basically give you a bird's eye view of your organization, right? Anything and everything, all the way from your sales revenues, from your human, uh, you, what your, your HR indexes, your HR KPIs, your uh, inventory turnover, anything and everything that is there in your system, we basically give you a report on it. And the CEO will basically get a report on everything that is happening in the company in real time. So there's a transaction which is booked there, it automatically shows on the CEO's dashboard. So, that's the kind of runtime analysis that we're giving or runtime analytics that we're giving. And then from a perspective of uh, like, you know, uh, uh, the CEO, when they have to take a decision, quick decision, they want to do a quick analysis, right? They want to, they do not want, I mean, they generally depend upon a group of people who basically try to get those reports and try to understand. He understands, he gets an understanding of what that report means and then later on he takes a decision, right? He or she takes a decision. Now, what do, what do we do? We basically, again, bring in AI. So how does the AI do? So basically, we have something called as ask, ask how. And there, they can just go and type in their question, right? And that question is basically on their own data, right? So they can have a look at, now here, we are basically taking the, obviously, the example of bikes. But then, they can then go and, for example, now he wants to understand do we sell more in Denmark or the Netherlands? A kind of a conversational question that you're asking the system. So that way, automatically a query is generated and it basically gives you all the details. Now let's say you, the CEO wants even more details. Like you know, they want to understand a trend because every CEO has an understanding of their own industry. So like they want to ask some nuanced questions. So for example, do we sell more in the Denmark or Netherlands? Then basically they have a look, they can slice and dice into the, into the particular uh, data. And then what happens is they are mountain bikes sales greater in mountainous countries, right? Again, there's a certain nuance that comes in. So in that case, then you basically, now what happens is now we are basically going and getting data from the internet, which are the mountainous countries in my list, right? And then from the mountainous countries, how do I find out like, you know, where my sales are more, right? And that kind of nuance again comes in. And then over and above that, uh, okay, the, now you can even obviously get it in a graphical format or in the uh, Excel format. And uh, what are the top three sales agents this year, right? So, so then, like, you know, you can do a personal analysis on your sales agents as well, right? So when you're do a, doing a person analysis, now why, why is the person doing that? They're basically trying to do this analysis on the sales agents because they want to understand who is getting the more revenue and who is costing them the most, right? Now, for example, sales guys, they always do a lot of travel, right? They do a lot of travel. You want to find out how much travel is being done by each of the sales guys and what is the revenue turnover of that particular sales guy? Because now, if you want to increase or decrease costs, you need to make sure that you have the levers in your hand. And so basically, like, you know, the bottom line, what I'm trying to bring in here is that CEO can basically now converse with the system. It's like a layer of conversational AI on your data. And again, instead of basically depending on a lot of reporting guys who basically go and 
create that report for you and give that report for you. A CEO can just directly talk to the system and get, those, get that nuanced data from the system and that would help in better decision making and a faster decision making as well if in case you want to pivot your organization as per the market. So anyways, uh, that's all on the uh, Gen AI stuff, uh, but, uh, okay, yeah. So over and above that now, let's, we've, we've talked about analytics, now what about planning? How do I do my planning, right? Now the CEO definitely would like to have an, uh, uh, like you know, when we do the top down planning, when they start, okay fine, this is my revenue this year, I want to get from this revenue, I want to increase my revenue for, for, by 40%. How do I do that? So that's the first target of your revenue. And then you start doing a top-down analysis. Okay, fine. If in case I have to increase my revenue, which products do I increase my sales in? So all of that basically tells a story, a planning story for your CEO, right? So in that case, how do we do it? We basically provide a, a platform where you are able to do that planning. Again, I'm not talking about doing the planning in some system. You can basically do that planning in your Excel, right? And you just say post and that basically goes and sits in your ERP, right? So again, you do not need to change the way you work when you're doing your planning. You basically continue the same way, you just clear the planning model in our system and basically that connects with your ERP and there you go, your planning is all written in stone in your ERP system, the single source of truth, right? So that's the kind of uh, user interface ease that we are basically talking about. Now, Definitely we provide planning, whatever planning that we provide, again, once you have planned for a certain budget or for a certain revenue, what is your actual revenue? We need to have that actual analysis on a runtime basis. Now, for example, today if I planned for, let's say, $1.2 million, but if in case I have only reached 800K or 8 lakh dollars, right, then I need to make sure to find out that, okay, fine, this is my projected revenue, this is my actual revenue. How do I do uh, get that? That's basically from our analysis or the analytics. The earlier bird's eye view that I was basically talking about is basically from the analytics front. And definitely there's an integration with, between all your business processes, so any planning that you do, be it sales and operations planning, be it financial planning, everything comes, uh, everything comes from the single source of truth, right? Now, all right, now let's come to the, our next uh, person, uh, there's a procurement manager. Now what does the procurement manager need? The pro procurement manager definitely needs to reduce cost, make sure that he gets the right commodity at the right price, and definitely uh, they would like to have a track of all the subcontracting orders, or, like you know, from the uh, perspective of activities in the subcontracting orders, as well as from a perspective of inventory. And definitely, what there are so many different types of procurements that happen in the jewelry industry. Uh, the reason I'm telling procurement is because procurement is a very important function for jewelry industry, where you're basically talking about your commodities, the bullion procurement, right? Where you're, you need to make sure that you put the right valuation to all your bullion at every single point of time, because again, every single time when you procure your bullion, it's always on an approximate rate, and then you have to do that kind of, what do you call it, the, uh, the adjustment to that rate so that you, your, inventory, uh, uh, your inventory is basically at the right valuation, right? So, how do I basically, how do a, does a procurement manager basically do that? Now procurement we basically cover across the, uh, like you know, across the board whatever procurement uh, uh, activities that you require is all covered here. Now we definitely have, from a requisitioning perspective, we definitely have a self-service requisitioning, you can call indents, you can call requisitions, whatever you call it in your industry terms. But one of the main things that we basically cover is that we give you a place where you can basically do your materials planning, be it your bullion procurement or be it your packaging material procurement, right? At every single, because uh, I'm pretty sure like, you know, a jewelry industry generally follows a seasonal way of working, right? You basically have your season from June to all the way to January or something. And then I think from the February, it's just a flat, uh, flat sale, right? Generally, that's the in industry trend that we've seen. But let's say you want, but for that particular season, you want to be totally prepared. You cannot have any kind of problems in your inventory when you basically reach that particular season because that's the season when you have your maximum sales. So to make sure that you are at the right inventory level throughout the season, basically we have something called as material requirements planning. So what material requirements planning does is basically 
you have your uh, like you know plan from one of the stores you have three four five stores right which basically is working under your organization and they basically have certain specific requirements for your for packaging materials so now what happens is if in case you do not do a centralized material requirements planning every store basically tries to get uh, the packaging material at whenever they want and at whatever price that they get because at that time at the time of season we need that packaging material right but let's say we do a proper centralized uh, planning like you know they give that plan they change that plan and we are able to centralize uh, like you know, procure it from a central ho right at a right price because we, what we also do is we basically give you a uh, supplier network from our side right you get a supplier network you basically are currently you have three or four suppliers in your uh, in your supplier master there are four suppliers who basically supply you but let's say we give you a total network of suppliers where you're able to probably even uh, consult up to 100 suppliers, right? You get a good cost on whatever you're procuring, right? So that way, you your basically procurement costs also decrease. And definitely, from a Boolean perspective, you get uh, your uh, Boolean at a certain uh, value. You should be able to adjust the value of your inventory based upon whatever the rates of the market is. And can we do that in SAP? Yes, you can. You can even connect it to the money market to get the uh, the right bullion value and then integrate that with your material price, right? So you, at any time when you run your inventory valuation, you get the right uh, value of your inventory. Now, uh, okay, back, there you go. Now, uh, I'll just want to just touch upon the subcontracting order. By the way, this is how the screen looks for a subcontracting order. Uh, so let's say you are giving a particular jewelry for subcontracting uh, for some subcontracting work like let it be like you know a manufacturing of a ring or something so there what happens is you basically are able to give the uh, right kind of quantities and like you know based upon the characteristics of that particular uh, of that particular good that you goods that you want you would be able to give the right quantity in the right uh, uh, measurement or like you know in the right uh, what do you call it uh, mode of measurement like it might be pieces it might be grams it might be liters whichever uh, measurement that you use basically you are able to give it in that particular measurement as well as you are able to uh, you are able to capture the details as to how much weight of commodity or gold or let's say uh, the precious stones that you basically give which diamond you have given what is the carrot of that particular time everything you basically are able to uh, cover into your subcontracting purchase order. So that way what happens is all your sub subcontracting service procurement gets properly tracked right from the system, right? And this again stays with you. So tomorrow when you are giving out your jewel, your commodity to your subcontractor, you would be able to see it in your own system through reports that which gold lies and which jewelry lies at which subcontractor currently, right? Now, uh, let's consider one of the main guys in the entire uh, organization. There is a supply chain head, right? Now, supply chain head, what do they want? They basically see, again, from a retail store perspective, always inventory is one of the most important problems, right? You need to make sure that you do your physical inventory count at certain, uh, like, you know, uh, repeatedly, right? Uh, so, how do I make sure that I do not miss that? How do I make sure that I do not miss my inventory counts? How do I make sure that the system nudges me that I have to do my inventory uh, inventory count as well as I have to complete the entire process and I have not left it in the middle, right? So that there is no inconsistencies in the inventory. So definitely there is one of the case that, uh, one of the things that supply chain head would like. And definitely how do I overview, uh, how can I see the overview of my inventory positions? That is how do I see, currently I am looking at the system, I just get a total view of my inventory, which stock, which store, what lo uh, which location, what, what inventory is lying. And definitely from a perspective of quality checks, are there right quality checks being done on the right material? Like for example, uh, if, there is the, if the characteristics of a ring right, is being applied to a necklace, the quality control, that's not the right way to basically check that. right? So how do I basically get that thing uh, like, you know, done from the system itself? right? So when I look at that, now this is basically the quality inspection usage that we are doing. Now, Again, from a perspective of uh, uh, ring, what are the specifications, right? What are the specifications? What are the characteristics of that particular uh, product is what we maintain here. And then with this, what you can do is you can basically push it to a quality uh, inspector in your organization. You will be able to conduct your quality checks 
based upon the product that you have. Again, this is maintained at the master's level. So basically, any time there's a ring that comes in, automatically the, those specific uh, relevant characteristics basically come in. And they basically, you are able to do the right quality check at the right time. And then when we basically look at, there you go. Now, when I look at, do I, did I miss anything? No. All right. So when do I do my inventory analytics? Now, this is the kind of overview page that you get. Now, this is, again, some parts are relevant, some parts are not, probably. But what I want to basically talk about is that at any single point of time, what are the recent um, movements that have happened in your inventory? What, what is like, you know, what are the overdue? Or what are the stocks that are in transit, which is very important for the jewelry industry? That currently, what, which stock is at which, uh, which place and how long has it been like, you know, which, like, you know, that, uh, that the stock is in transit so that you make sure that you take care of that inventory if it is ri rightly posted on that uh, like, you know, at that particular stock location or rather like, you know, what is the stock value by stock type. Now, there are various stock types that you might maintain. So how, what is the value and what is the type of stock that you are currently holding. So all of this, now these are certain KPIs that we are showing you, but you can define your own KPIs. Right? You can define your own KPIs and you can basically report on those right KPIs. Now, um, all right. Oh, oh. Okay, it's kind of a lucky game for me. There you go. Now, uh, when I talked about the subcontracting, uh, uh, what do you call uh, subcon the inventory of the subcontractors, right? So, I can basically get all the uh, materials that are there at any subcontractor right at the tip of my fingers. Now, what I can see is like, you know, these are all the purchase, purchasing documents that I have. These are all the subcontracting orders that I have and all the materials, all the like, you know, either might be gold or whatever uh, earrings, whatever, like, you know, if in case there are some, uh, a lot of services are being also rendered by the jewelry industry. Like, you know, you basically give your old jewelry for polishing, right? So that's basically given and then sent to a subcontractor for polishing. So all of that is being maintained in the purchase order report, right? So that way you are able to track all of your inventory at every single subcontractor. Now, uh, there you go. Now, there are some other ones like, you know, if in case, let's say you are giving, I mean, subcontracting is basically considered as memo work generally in the jewelry industry. Any kind of memo work at and like, you know, if you want a certain different way of reporting, definitely the, that is available. Uh, like, you know, what are the findings that are, uh, uh, like, you know, are at the subcontractor's place? What is the findings that is there at my place? Like, you know, uh, my uh, stock, everything is being covered. And again, uh, from a perspective of country-wise analysis, what are the findings that are there at India? What are the findings that are there at Hong Kong? What are, what is the amount of diamond that is being held in each of these countries? It's all basically covered as a part of the inventory analytics report. And definitely from a store perspective, if you want to make sure that you have a full report by day end, what is the inventory per store, that is also covered as a part of our inventory. And again, it is all coming from the single source of truth. Now, uh, over and above that, what I would also like to probably give is that, uh, just a minute, and there you go. Yes, I do have it. Now. Uh, when I talked about nudging, system nudging you, so uh, what we provide is basically, again, we provide something like a social media notification type of uh, uh, UI, right? Where you basically get notifications of what you're supposed to complete. So let's say there is some communication lag between like the inventory manager, not especially store uh, warehouse clerk, but there might be store clerk, right? So if there's some communication lag between the inventory manager and the store clerk, there are certain postings that have not happened, right? There are certain stocks which are still in transit. All of that would be covered. And again, the system would nudge you. And this by default, the system nudges you that this particular transaction currently is not being posted. This transaction is supposed to be posted, let's say one day ago, two days ago. So that can, those kind of nudges, we call it situation handling. There is a situation here wherein the inventory has not like, you know, been posted and the system tells you to handle that particular situation. So that situation handling is being provided from SAP and this is one of the many scenarios where jewelry customers have gotten a lot of value from SAP systems, right? Um, now, coming to the last and one of the most important guys, the Rokada man, our uh, Mr. CFO. So what does the CFO want? So now, today, like, you know, uh, when you're uh, procuring your bullion, you want to make sure that your risks 
of the price volatility of your commodity is being catered to right how do i do that definitely you would say that one of the main ways how uh, how a cfo can do it is through hedging right taking positions for your forwards your swaps and all of that so that you are able to make sure that you are uh, hedging your uh, pricing risks right and then definitely from a perspective of uh, uh, working capital now definitely you would like to know what is your liquidity currently right what is the money that is left in the bank what is the money that is currently being uh, like you know there are commitments on that particular part so all of that all of those details is also required what is the credit that credit line that i have currently with my banks so all of that from a working capital management perspective is something that you would definitely a cfo would be would have a challenge in tracking and definitely another important point how do i may know what my cost of goods uh, sold is so that i can know what is my margin now what we basically do here okay there you go so what we have is now uh, when i talked about manufacturing right uh, sap basically provides the entire process flow for your manufacturing where per work center like you know your karigar is sitting and basically doing your uh, like you know your ornament uh, creation you basically do uh, designing your ornament casting your ornament so who what's the current uh, like you know material that is being used by that particular karigar is being tracked in the system right how much time the karigar is taking is being tracked in the system so what does that give that basically you are able to make sure that you are getting the right overheads of your manufacturing process from the system and that flows basically into finance now finance here what we do is we have a easy way like you know drag and drop way of basically finding your profitability so now since it is reaching finance what happens is you are able to get the right uh, like you know uh, details about all of your line of products now you can even like it depends upon what kind of details you want you can definitely go by product what is the profitability per product you can definitely go profitability based upon your geography right which country you are doing better how profitable are you in each of these countries so all of that is being covered as a from a pro profitability analytics and this is mainly because the value that sap brings and one of the main values that sap brings is integration of all your all your business processes so let's say you have your production team who is working in a silo finance team who is working in a silo again if there is no connect how are you going to get your profitability uh, profitability analysis now that's where sap brings in the integration aspect wherein you are able to integrate your finance with your manufacturing and that's how you are able to get your profitability analytics right and when i basically look at hmm, there you go all right now when i talk about uh, working cap uh, working capital management you definitely would like to have a cash and liquidity management now what i what do i mean by cash and liquidity management what i mean is that you have a lot of your bank accounts with a lot of banks right what is what is my uh, cash in each of these bank accounts right based upon that now today in my system what are the open transactions that i have and how much money have i already committed to certain of, certain of these transactions they based upon that what is my liquidity and based upon the open transactions in the system let's say for the next 90 days what is going to be my liquidity that kind of analysis is coming co coming under our cash and liquidity management now definitely from a debt investment and risk management definitely if you have uh, like you know for the cash that you have if you are basically make making sure that you are investing in some debts or in certain mutual funds uh, in certain companies you need to make sure that you are a, like you know rightly marking up those investments or marking down those debts whatever to make sure that you get a total understanding as to what your what your standing is currently in the system uh, in the uh, in the market so that is what is covered as a part of our debt and uh, investments and definitely payments and bank communication the entire receivables and payables communication that happens to the banks right that is totally automated when you basically come on sap because we basically provide a connection between your erp system and your bank so that any kind of receivable that happens comes into your system and sits into your receivables and anything any type of payments that you want to do it it automatically happens from your bank account so ba basically what we do is we basically increase your brand standing as well and definitely with all of this we are able to do a right amount of working capital management as well now oh let's go so 
there you go. So, uh, and now another part which I basically was talking about was on the commodity procurement side, right? Now, with respect to pricing, right, when we're talking about procurement of your commodity, with respect to pricing, uh, as we know that we need to make sure that we are hedging our, like, you know, commodity pricing as well. Now, let's say you are buying at a high, I mean, again, I do not have to basically explain that to the industry because the industry definitely knows it. Now, if you are basing... Um, basically buying your uh, uh, gold at a certain lower price and you expect it to go high, definitely you probably would like to, definitely if it, the price